In this video, I'm going to walk through a Python 3 Jupyter Notebook, which I've written to test the scaling of a function uh, with pandas. So the first step I'm going to do is load in the modules that I'm going to need in this notebook. And then I am going to load a function that I wrote called double column A, which takes in a row, converts that to a dictionary, and then for whatever value is in column A, returns the doubled of whatever that value is. So we'll execute that cell. The scaling experiment that I want to do for each uh, data frame, I'm going to run five tests. So let's say I've got a data frame with 100 rows. I'm going to do a measurement of how long it takes to apply this function. And we'll do that five times. And then we'll repeat the same experiment with a new data frame of size 1,000 rows. And we'll see how long that takes. And we'll do that test five times. And then the last test, we'll do 10,000 row data frame. And we'll do five tests of how long it takes to run this function. So what I wanted to sort of explain is this big block of code that I um, am using to run the experiment. So I'm going to run the experiment, and then we'll uh, look at the results. And later in this video, we'll break down how this complicated block of code was written. So I've got a little display here showing how long we are uh, in each of these steps. And we'll come back to that's just sort of a progress meter, but it shows us how long the function ran for. All right, the output of that big, scary block of code is just a dictionary where it tells us for a data frame with 100 rows, the average time to apply that function was about 0 0.03 seconds. And then for a data frame of 1,000 rows, it took about 2 tenths of a second. And for 10,000 rows, the average time to apply the function to a data frame was a little under 2 seconds. So as a little sanity check, you can see uh, these are scaling um, by a factor of 10. So it's getting 10 times longer when we have 10, 10 times more rows. So that's sort of a, a good sign. But we can actually plot that and see um, that it, it is pretty linear for those three data points. So two points to define a line, but three points we can sort of identify that, yeah, that is pretty linear. So it gives us some confidence. And again, I'll come back to what all this code does and why we're doing that in a little bit. All right, so what did we, how did we get there? That's a big, uh, impressive block of code, but it's not how I built it. So the first step that I did was I wanted to have a data frame, let's say with 10,000 rows, and I want to load every value um, with a, in that table with a value between of zero and 1,000. And so this is saying create a, an array and the size of the array should be 10,000 by four. And then since we're using data frames, we're gonna specify that the labels for those columns are A, B, C, and D. So when we execute that cell and we look at the shape, what we get back is a 10,000 rows by four column table. And if we look at the actual contents, the first five data rows are a set of values between 0 and 1,000, and they have labels for the columns A, B, C, and D. So this is a nice sort of confirmation that this snippet here of creating a data frame actually did what we think it was supposed to do. So now um, we're going to take a look at that function again that I wrote, and we're going to use it to return a new column. So this here is saying take the data frame that I just created and apply this function to each row. And this axis equals one is saying apply the function here in a per row operation. And the results of that, the return statement is an integer because we're going to take whatever in column A and we're going to double that and store the result to a, a new column we'll call K. So when I run that, it takes a little while because there's 10,000 rows. And we can check 
So now the size of the data frame is 10,000, same row count as it was before, but now it has five columns. And if we take a look at that um, head function again, there's a new column, K, which is, has values that are double what the values in A were. So not too complicated, but just something that sort of flex the, the, the computer a little bit to, to do a computation. All right, so now getting back to that timing function, um, I'm going to reset just for, I'll check in here, we're going to reset this data frame back to the four columns that it was originally. And now I'm going to talk about the, the timer. So the time, that time function is pretty useful because all it does is tells you the number of seconds since 1970. For why 1970 is relevant, you can check out these web links. But needless to say, it's just sort of a, a very useful stopwatch that you might have. So earlier we said that this applying this function took some time. Well, how much time did it take? We'll, we'll take a, a, a measurement of what time it is and store that to a variable, run our function, and then we'll take the difference between what time it is after the function ran, subtract that from when we started our stopwatch, and that will be the elapsed time. So this is going to print the elapsed time in seconds. All right, as I say in the text, a good data point. Right? So we have now measured how long it took to apply that function to every row, which means now we can start building up our scaling test. So the first thing that I'll do, and this the order here of which operation comes first, whether it's the number of tests or the scaling sort of is not too relevant. So I'm going to start with the inner loop being the number of tests. And, and what I mean inner loop, we're going to build up eventually two loops. So this will be the, the first one that you start with. So my test index is just going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And that's the last time that we'll use that. And again, inside that loop, we'll do the same timing that we did before. When we run that, what we get back out is a set of numerical values that tell us what the time was for each of those five tests. All right, just to be um, very uh, robust in our testing, we're going to make sure that every data frame and every test is different. And so I'm going to insert the, the data frame creation inside this, this for loop up here. And so when I run that, we get relatively similar times. There's a little bit of variation, but um, this is just for my own confidence that the timing isn't specific to some unknown feature in the data frame. With 10,000 rows, that's not too much of an issue. Um, and so it's, again, doing those five tests, but every time now it's creating a new data frame. All right. The printing of a result to the screen is useful for understanding what is going on in this loop. But in the end, we'll want to take all of those measurements and plot them. And so I'm going to store rather than print this to a, a, a variable. And so I'm going to create a list. The only modification in, the next, in this next cell is that I'm creating a, a list and I'm going to store the results in, a, uh, in an element of that list every time we, we create a loop. So this loop will get no output shown. And then once that loop is done, so this star here means it now it's flipped back to a number. So the star means it's running and the number means it's finished. So now we can print that list. And basically this is just a list of all of the timings from each of those five tests. What we really want is the reason we're doing those five tests is because we want to take the average value to see um, what was the average time over the five tests. And so we can just calculate that by summing the list and then dividing it by the number of tests. So this is the average value of our experiment. Now we can put that into play. So before we were saving all the values to a list and then taking the average value outside of the loop. Going back to our loop, we're going to insert the, the test results averaged into a variable. And so when we run this loop, again, it will take 
uh, about 10 seconds to run, but at the end we'll have a stored variable with the average in it. So now I'm going to execute cell 27. This is again the average value. Not quite the same as what we had before, but close enough that indicates that 5 tests is probably about good. Now, as I mentioned, we want to test the scaling, not just one sort of like size of the data frame. And so we'll want to test the data frame of size 100, 1,000, 10,000, right? And the, the, the more rows in the data frame, the longer our test is going to take. So this is a question of how much time do you have to do the experiment. So I'm going to just do these three sizes. And basically, we took that same function or the, the, the for loop that we started with in the, in the earlier cell. And now we're going to insert that inside of another for loop. So this for loop that we've just added counts um, how many rows. And so that's the list of row size. And so here, the first time we enter into this loop, the, the row count will be 100. And then it will say, all right, declare a data frame with 100 rows and four columns, and then time how long it takes to apply this function to each row and store the output to a, a new, new column. And then once you've got that timing for that operation, then we'll sum the results from the five tests and we'll load that into a dictionary. That's a little different than what we did before because before we were just loading it to a scalar variable because we only had uh, one data data frame size, but here we'll want to record for each of the different data frame sizes how uh, much time it took on average. So the thing that you wouldn't want to do at this point, or uh, is have that timer outside of the uh, for loop or above the data frame creation, because all we want to test here is how long it took that function to uh, to be applied. So we'll run that. And then we'll print the, once that's uh, finished running, then we will run a print statement against the dictionary to see what the contents are. So you can sort of see where we're going to end up here is that we're going to have three values for our x-axis. This is how big, how many rows were in the data frame, and then the axis is the timing of what the result was. So we can get the, the values from that dictionary and the keys and store those as list. And that will allow us to put those into a scatter plot. So the scatter plot um, with the labels is nice and easy to understand. So the number of rows in a data frame is very small. It doesn't take very long. As the number of rows in the data frame grows, then it takes longer. And for really large data frames, it takes a long time to run, right? So if you're very impatient, two seconds is a long time. And then, because I like to really emphasize the fact that this is growing linear, I'm gonna throw in this uh, pretty long uh, function that I found on Stack Overflow, and it's linked here in the, in the comment, but this is just to make it look pretty and say that um, we're confident that this is pretty linear, at least for the three lines that we've plotted so far. 